city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Smoke, presented by Army in Europe magazine, a monthly feature magazine for the use of a soldier and civilian. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. You don't have to put up with any more of this. Now, if you want to sign a complaint, I'll see that you're protected. 
No. No, Marshal, it's all right. I'll go. Yeah. Maybe that'll learn you not to butt into a man's personal affairs more than... I'll butt in if you hit her again. I'm warning you. I was hoping you'd flatten him, Matt. I was too, Mr. Jones. Give me a glass of rye, bartender. Yeah, sure, Marshal. Poor little gal. Matt, you remember Hester when she first came here from the east? Yeah. Some of the girls helped me, and we made her a wedding dress out of some linen tablecloths, all white. She's as pretty as a picture. Well, yeah, she's showing you very pretty now. After the heat, she's there no home. Well, Sam's had a lot of bad luck, Chester. Two years of crop failures. Lost most of his herd from blackwater fever. Is that her fault? No. But it makes a man kind of short-tempered. Well, those two are heading for something bad, Matt. I'll give you a hug. How No kidding. I won't take that bet. I hadn't gotten away. He's not going to kill anybody. 
Look, you just sign the complaint, and I'll take care of him. It's just all so different when we got married. Him and, and the way the world looked. Everything is different. Miss Lyle, maybe that's enough talking for now. I used to think back on it lots of times, laying awake at night, listening to the coyotes across the prairie. I don't do that much no more, but I used to. Like like when we were first married. He was so kind and gentle. He'd, he'd tell me I, I was the prettiest girl he'd ever seen in his whole life. Now, Miss Wackett, he want me to put on my good dress and and when we'd sit in the porch in the evenings and, and wear my brooch with the pearls, he'd, he'd pin it on me himself and, and I would always laugh because he was so clumsy and he couldn't. That, that's what it was about tonight, Marshal. He wanted that brooch to bring into town and sell, but I wouldn't tell him where it was. What is it? Changes people that start out good and breaks them and turns them bad. I don't know, man. It's time, maybe, or maybe it's a prairie. A prairie. I hate it. Will you sign a complaint, Miss Waggett? Yes. Yes, I will, Marshal. All right, all right, everybody, quiet down, course in session. Now, I don't have much time. I rode in yesterday, right out again tonight, so it don't matter whether you got business with this court or if you just come in off the street to loaf long as you're here, you got to show proper respect so we can get on with the cases. And yeah, let's see now. There's the first thing you got here is a, a case of... Wife beating Sam Lackett. Preliminary here in the Sam in court. Yes, sir, he is, Your Honor. I just bought him over from the jail. I ain't done nothing, Judge. Sam, you'll get your chance to speak your piece. From what I hear about you, you're overdue in court anyhow. Uh, uh, is Marshal Dillon here? Chester, where's Matt? Yeah, well, I don't know, sir. I figured he'd be here by now. So we can't start this without him. Well, see, him and Doc was going to bring Ms. Lackett, providing she felt up to it. According to Doc, she's... She's have to lose the sight in one of her eyes. Oh, it's a lie. She's just putting on, trying to make it hard on me. Sam, I'll tell you right now, I don't like wife beaters. You get me mad, I'll find some legal loophole to hang you. I ain't done nothing. I'm sorry to be late, Your Honor. That's all right, man. Uh, Stark wasn't even too sure Miss Laggett was in any condition to come here, but she insisted that she was. Well, she ought to be in bed. She's going to tell you a bunch of lies. All right, all right, let's get on with it then. I'll read the complaint here, and then we'll see what we've got to go on. Uh, now, there's a complaint charge in Your the... Honor, um, hmm? sir. Uh, please, sir. Could I say something? Well, it ain't quite in order, but I guess it's all right. What is it, Miss Lackey? Well, it, it's about that complaint, Your Honor. I want to take it back. I, I don't know what I was thinking when I signed it. That there ain't no truth in it, Judge. I, I fell. That's how I got hurt. Yeah. I told you that complaint was a pack of lies, didn't I? Well, Marshal? She's afraid of him, Your Honor. She's scared to go through with it. You're sure this is what you want to do, Miss Lackett? Yes, sir. I'm sure. It seems a shame to let a white beat the scoundrel like him get off scot-free just by intimidating the witness. Now, if there was only some other charge, like resisting arrest or shooting off firearms... He did resist arrest, Your Honor. Mr. Dillon had to slap him flat. Well, in that case, Sam, $50 or 50 days. Well, you ain't got $50, and you know it. That's a dirty, crooked way of running things. Hey, it's your prisoner, Matt. All right, Your Honor. All right, come on, Sam. I got a big stack of firewood over at the jail. Just wait for it to be cut. Oh, Chester. Oh. You must be all of 25, I guess. 
Well, it ain't the years that make you old, Marshal. I, I didn't come to talk about that, though. Uh, you shouldn't be here at all, Miss Wackett. I told you to stay in bed for another week at least, didn't I? Well, I, I just couldn't get used to it, Marshal. It didn't seem proper. Yeah, well, you want to talk to Sam, huh? How's he... How's he taken to it, Marshal? Mean? Well, maybe we can work some of that out of him, but the time is 50 days are up. Well, now, the way I recollect it, the, the judge said $50 or 50 days. Yeah, that's right. And that if the fine was to be paid up, you'd turn him loose? Well, yeah. $41 is as it stands now. He's been here nine days, but I doubt anybody's going to pay me more. I want to pay his fine, Marshal. What? I got the money. I, I sold my brooch to one of the girls at the Long Branch. Here. See? Yes, I see. But, but Miss Lockett, he pretty near killed you a couple of weeks ago. Next time he might just do it. No, Chester, he won't. There you are, Marshal. Forty-one dollars. Well, all right, go get him, will you, Chester? Yes, sir. But... Miss Lockett, why are you doing this? First withdrawing your complaint in court and now paying his fine and getting him out. Why? I don't know exactly. I, at least not how to put it in words. I, I've been trying to think things out for the last two weeks. My life and, and how it's wasted and what's become of me and all. Well, you'll get over this in time. No, Martha. You, you'll get beat just so many times and you get over it. Then there's one finally you don't get over. Because there ain't nothing left of you. Esther, what do you think you're doing here? Come around the gloat, did you? No, Sam. You just paid your fine, Sam. You're being released. Wow. Well, so you finally come to your senses. That's right, Sam. And you, Marshal, maybe this will learn you not to interfere between a man and his wife from now on. I don't call a wife, Peter, a man. Ain't you done no thinking, Sam? Ain't you even sorry at all for what you done to me? You better keep your mouth shut if you know it's good for you. What I've done ain't nothing to what'll happen to you if you try law and again me again. You'd beat me. Is that what you're saying? I'll beat you a plenty you don't stand lying. I might just throw you clean off the place. I can't see no reason keeping somebody as ugly and broken up with you. And it's still the same. And it'll go on being. You ain't changed one bit. You really think you would, Miss Lane? I just hope that was all, Marshal. The last little piece of hope I had. Sam, come over here by the window. Well. I brought you a present. I got it wrapped up in here. What'd you do? Finally sell that brooch of yours? I let you off from court, Sam. But I guess you're kind of back in court now. Charged with killing a woman. Your wife. How do you plead, Sam? I don't know what you're talking about. How do you plead? I'll plead you when I get you out to the place. No, you won't. And if you won't answer the charge, or even say you're sorry or promise to do better, then the court's going to decide for you. He's a woman. That's like it. Don't do it.
Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.